Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be talking about how we can integrate trig functions with different powers. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we're going to focus on sine of x and cosine of x for this first video. And we are going to talk about when they have different powers. So first off, we have when there is an odd power. So notice here we have cosine to the power of 5 x dx. So when you have an odd power, what you want to do is you want to pull out one of those cosines. So here I'm going to rewrite this as cosine to the power of 4 of x multiplied by cosine of x dx. So the reason that we're doing this is because we're actually going to go ahead and use a trig identity. And the one we're going to use is the Pythagorean trig identity. So I'll go ahead and write it out here. We got cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals 1. So we can solve for either of these by solving the other one over. So I can solve for sine squared of x by subtracting over cosine squared of x. Same thing with cosine squared. If I subtract off that sine squared, I get what it's equal to. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. And obviously, we're going to go ahead and use the cosine with the even power. So I separated this out. Now we have cosine to the power of 4. And again, I'm going to rewrite that because what it is is cosine squared of x to the power of 2, right? And now I'm going to plug in using that identity. So 1 minus sine squared of x squared cosine of x dx. So the purpose of doing this is so we can use u substitution. So I use that trig identity, so I would get sine of x. And so when I take the derivative of both sides, I get cosine of x dx, which notice that cosine of x is the one that we left out. So the purpose of doing this is so we can go ahead and use u substitution. Here we have what du is equal to, and we can go ahead and plug that in. So here we get 1 minus u squared to the power of 2 times du. So let's go ahead and FOIL this out. We get 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the power of 4 du. And we can go ahead and integrate that, right? So here we get u minus, and that becomes 2u to the power of 3 divided by 3 plus u to the power of 5 divided by 5 plus c. And of course, our last step is to go ahead and replace that u back in. So here we get sine of x minus 2, and that's going to be sine cubed of x divided by 3, plus sine to the power of 5 of x divided by 5 plus c. And that right there is our solution. So this could be sine to the power of 5. This could be cosine to the power of 5, any odd power. You're going to pull out one of them, and we're going to use that trig identity to plug the other back in. So now what happens when we have an even power? What we're going to do is use a different identity. If I try to use the Pythagorean identity, you're just going to end up going in circles. So let's avoid that. And we're going to use the fact that sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2. So this is a double angle identity. And also, if you were to have cosine to an even power, you would go ahead and use this identity. So 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2. So let's go ahead and rewrite it so we can really see how we're going to plug this in. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine of squared of x to the power of 2 dx. So that way I can plug in what sine squared is equal to. So if you wanted, you could rewrite this. I see it also written as 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2x to the power of 2 dx. So we can go ahead and square this whole thing. So 1 half squared becomes 1 fourth, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it out of the integral since it's a scalar multiple. And now we can go ahead and, you know, square out that whole thing. So that becomes 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x, and that becomes plus cosine squared of 2x. So notice what parts we can integrate right now. I know how to integrate this one. We are able to integrate this part, but this cosine squared of 2x, we are actually going to go ahead and replace it with the same identity. So if we were to replace cosine squared of x with cosine squared of 2x, it would just replace this x with 2x. And so this would become 1 plus cosine of 4x divided by 2. So we're going to go ahead and replace that in our integral. So I replaced that cosine squared of 2x. If you wanted, you could rewrite this. So instead of 1 over that whole fraction, you could rewrite this as 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 4x. That way it's a bit easier to integrate. And if you really wanted to, notice we have this 1 plus 1 half right here. We can even add those together. So that becomes 3 halves minus 2 cosine of 2x. And then we get plus 1 half cosine of 4x. And this we all know how to integrate. So let's go ahead and do that. That 1 fourth hangs out on the outside. We get 3 halves x minus, and that becomes 2 positive sine of 2x, and then we have to divide by what's on the inside. So 
So we have to divide by a scalar multiple of 2. Plus that 1 half is hanging out. That becomes sine of 4x. And for that same reason, we're going to go ahead and divide by 4. And then plus some constant c. So if you wanted to distribute that 1 fourth back in, you totally could. So that becomes 3 eighths x minus, and those 2's cancel out right here. So then you just get um, sine of 2x divided by 4, bringing that 4 in from the outside. Plus, and that becomes 8 times 4, which is 32. So we get sine of 4x divided by 32 plus c. And that right there would be your solution. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at products of sine and cosine and what happens when there's different powers. So A, we have when both powers are even integers. And we're going to make it so this is all in terms of sine, all, or all in terms of cosine. I'm going to do that by using that double angle identity for both of these, right? So this becomes 1 minus cosine of 2x, all divided by 2. And this whole thing is raised to the power of 2, right? Because sine is raised to the power of 4. And then we're going to multiply that by cosine squared x, so 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2 and then dx. So first I'm going to bring out those scalar multiples. So I have 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, times 2 gives me 8. So I have 1 eighth on the outside. And now I'm going to go ahead and square that 1 minus cosine of 2x. So that becomes 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine to the power of 2 of 2x, right? And then this still needs to multiply by 1 plus cosine of 2x dx. So let's go ahead and multiply that as well. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. We only have one scalar right here. We have cosine of the 2x minus 2 cosine 2x. And then with the powers of 2, we have these two right here. And then the power of 3 is just, you know, all by itself. So the next thing that we can do is we could replace this using that double angle identity. But notice here, now we have another term. And this is to the power of 3 which means we're going to go all the way back here and we're going to do the odd powers rule. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to split this up. So we have 1 eighth multiplied by this integral, 1 minus cosine of 2x. And don't forget, we have this minus on the outside, so that's going to distribute to everything. 1 half, and that becomes minus 1 half cosine, and that's going to become 4x, right? Just like we did in that last problem dx, and I'm going to separate this into its own separate integral. So we have that cosine to the power of 3. I'm going to take out one of those cosines to the power of 3. So I get cosine squared of 2x times cosine of just normal 2x dx. If we wanted to on this one, we have that 1 minus 1 half, and we can go ahead and combine those scalars. So we get 1 eighth. 1 minus 1 half is just a half minus cosine of 2x minus 1 half cosine of 4x. Now, in the second integral, I'm going to go ahead and replace this with 1 minus sine squared of 2x multiplied by cosine of 2x dx. So in order to integrate this, we're going to go ahead and set u equal to sine of 2x, right? So when we take the derivative of this, we get 2 cosine of 2x dx. We already have the cosine, which is very nice. We have it right here. We have the dx, but we're missing that 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on the inside so I can replace that for my du. But that means I have to multiply by 1 half on the outside, right? So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and integrate this left one. So that becomes 1 half of x minus, and that is sine of 2x divided by 2 minus that 1 half hangs out, and we get sine of 4x divided by 4. I'm not going to add on c. I'm going to add it on to the very end once I'm done integrating. So now we have 1 half times 1 eighth, so we get that 1 16th. And now we're going to go ahead and replace all of that in. So we get 1 minus u squared, and then that rest of it becomes du, right? Okay, so if you wanted, you can multiply that 1 eighth in. So we get 1 16th x minus 1 16th sine of 2x, and that becomes 1 over 64 sine of 4x. And let's go ahead and take the antiderivative of this whole thing. We get u minus u cubed divided by 3 plus some constant c. So that's where I'm adding all my constant. So let's go ahead and replace u back in. I'm just going to copy and paste this because I'm lazy. Plus 1 16th. And if you wanted, you can multiply that in at the same time. So we get sine of 2x. And that becomes minus 1 16th times 3 is 1 over 48. And that is sine to um, the power of 3 of 2x plus c. 
So we do have some common um, terms here. We got minus 1 16th of that and plus 1 16th. So those end up canceling each other out, which is super nice. And here we can write out this whole thing. So 1 16th x. And that right there is our solution. So we have actually a lot of moving parts going on in here. So use the double angle identities, get it all in terms of cosine of 2x. And from there, you can kind of pick and choose the other rules that you use. So when we had that cosine cubed, we use the odd rule power. The other case that we have is at least one power is odd. So they could both be odd or one of them could be odd. So what we do is we do the same rule as the very first problem. We take whichever one is odd. In that case, it's sine cubed and we bring one of them out. So here I'm going to multiply by sine squared of x times cosine to the negative 2 of x. And then we're going to have that remaining sine of x, right? We're going to go ahead and replace that sine squared of x with 1 minus cosine squared of x. So notice here, I have my even powers are all in terms of cosine, and then we have that remaining sine of x. And you can probably clue in that we're going to use u substitution. So we're going to set u equal to that cosine of x, right? And that's because when I take the derivative, I get negative sine of x dx. We have sine of x and we have the dx, but we just need that negative. So I'll multiply by negative 1 on both the inside and the outside. That way, I can go ahead and replace it so that negative hangs out on the outside, and we get 1 minus u squared times u to the negative 2 du. Here, we can go ahead and multiply all this stuff in. So first, I'm going to multiply u to the negative 2. So you get u to the negative 2, and that becomes minus 1 du. And if you wanted to multiply that negative in, you totally could. So we get negative u to the negative 2 plus 1 du. So now let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. I add 1 to the exponent, divide by that new exponent plus u plus c. If you wanted to, you could rewrite that as negative 1 over u plus u plus c. And we can replace u with what it was originally equal to, which is cosine of x. So that's all I have for us today in this video. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems and topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.